I'm going to go ahead and uh, go first. We're going to take team in just a little right. bit, if that's all right. So it'll be myself, um, uh, Mary uh, Fisher, um, who you, uh, the board all knows, who uh, spoke uh, last month at the board committee as well as the board meeting. Uh, Edward Easterling will uh, talk a little bit about the financial impacts. Uh, uh, Mary will kind of give a, a briefing, a little bit of, of decon uh, or decommissioning and the elements around that because one of the recommendations uh, that uh, we talked to the board last month about is to, to bring back that recommendation on what that decommissioning methodology would be. Um, and then I'll close it out with our final and updated recommendations if, uh, if that's okay. Um, and I'm going to go through these relatively quickly, specifically the ones that we've already went through at last month's board committee meeting uh, as, the, uh, as well as the board meeting. And all of these are on our website as well, or oldpplistens.com. But obviously the strategic directives um, that, uh, that we have talked about regarding this recommendation around resource planning and competitive rates um, really um, are, are driving us to take these kinds of conversations very public relative, relative to the strategic directives. Um, we've talked about strategic trends, whether it's cost pressures on the left, whether it's revenue uh, growth pressures uh, or lack thereof uh, on the right. Um, you know, we're seeing those pressures kind of impact us. And so as we begin to think about the future, how do we take those into consideration? And you'll hear a little bit about that um, as we get to the decommissioning recommendation as well. Uh, to making sure that we think about not only regulatory flexibility, but financial flexibility as we kind of move forward uh, and how that impacts us uh, in the future uh, as well. Uh, study framework questions, you know, here are the questions that we essentially asked ourselves to make sure and, and shared with the board. What is our optimal rebalance portfolio considering uh, many market regulatory and technological uh, futures uh, that are out there that we know of today? And I'll talk a little bit about those before I turn over the, the portfolio conversation uh, to Mary. Uh, what current assets, our current assets or portfolio, uh, remain part of any uh, optimal future OPPD portfolio? Um, what is the cost of keeping current assets in OPPD's future portfolio? Um, what is the cost or benefit of delaying potential asset retirements? Um, so some of those assets that we had identified as uh, retiring, um, you know, we're, we're asking to bring those back in um, for peaking reasons, for very few hours of operations, but for peaking reasons. Um, and what is the cost or benefit of that in that regard? Here are the technological, uh, the technologies that we considered in the optimization review. Uh, gas turbine combined cycles, uh, uh, cogen units, uh, reciprocating engines. Um, I think this is kind of the changing uh, times. We, we didn't see this two years ago show up as a as a technology uh, advantage. Uh, new solar, new wind, um, and these would be new solar, new wind without PTCs as we think about longer term, longer range. Uh, we looked at new solar, new wind uh, relative to capacity and energy contracts um, in, the, in the current state. So with, uh, that would include PTCs uh, as well. The other one that showed up, uh, long duration batteries uh, began to show up uh, as, a, as a potential uh, technology that's becoming uh, maybe not necessarily um, viable today, but certainly it looks like it will have some opportunity to be integrated uh, in the future. Um, energy efficiency programs, these are our demand side management initiatives that we have in place. Capacity and en energy contracts, and if you remember our uh, conversation last month, we actually um, went out in January with an RFP to look at both capacity and energy related contracts because one of the things we wanted to make sure that we had in the modeling um, was specific and, and uh, really accuracy uh, around what those contracts would be. Not speculations, not assumptions, uh, but real live um, dollars and cents relative to those kind of contracts as we would look at modeling those. And then um, really we looked at the extended power up rate of Fort Calhoun, um, adding another 15% output or another 75 megawatts. How would that impact uh, the modeling um, with the clean power plan or without the clean power plan, uh, depending on what happens uh, with that. Uh, we excluded uh, kind of new nuclear, pulverized coal, coal and uh, IGCC at this point in time um, because of regulatory reasons, because of cost reasons, um, just too significant at this time. The scenarios that we investigated were really baseline. So baseline was really kind of status quo. Uh, Fort Calhoun is not retired, it extends to 2033. 
North Omaha 4 and 5 is converted to natural gas in 2023. Um, and we also upgraded uh, Fort Calhoun in the model options to give it the, the, the greatest benefit of the doubt as we kind of move forward. And then we looked at it in a clean power plan scenario. And then if uh, the clean power plan uh, does not move forward or determines to be unconstitutional, uh, but we believe there will be something that will follow that if that is the case. And the industry is pretty clean on that, or clear on that. Um, so what is the cost of business kind of as usual? And that's what we compare with is the baseline. And then the rebalanced are all the capacity and energy options um, that, uh, that we would consider uh, from a cost, of, uh, cost effective perspective as well as from a, from a risk perspective as well. Um, we, would keep some, uh, we would keep our existing contracts relative to WAPA. Nebraska City 2, um, only half of Nebraska City 2 we would keep because half of that goes to uh, seven other parties. Um, any of the other PPAs that we have relative to wind today, um, to the extent of their contracts. Uh, we must meet a renewable target of anywhere between 30 and 50. We kind of capped it at 50, primarily for the reason of the model would continually grab it and, and, and increase it. So we wanted to cap it at least at this point in time at 50, understanding that may change in the future as well. Um, and then the wide range of other resource alternatives, um, which we considered as well. And then what is this optimal portfolio from a deterministic or a net present value perspective, and then also from a risk perspective. So I'm going to ask uh, Mary to come up to talk a little bit about um, the optimized portfolio options, um, again, and some of the stuff uh, that you've seen in the, in the previous month, but also some changes that we've now had the opportunity to kind of uh, vet out uh, some of the ways that we can visually show it that, that may help uh, and explain it and some definitions around that. Edward will talk about the financial modeling. Um, Mary will come back up and talk a little bit about the decommissioning options, uh, and then I'll come back up for the final recommendation. I think I'll probably sit right there for the final recommendation. So. Very good. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Tim. Good morning. Good morning. So as Tim said, I'm up here to talk about portfolio capacity options. Uh, and I'll give you the key findings here. So uh, Fort Calhoun drops out in every case that we ran. Uh, we get, when it's given an option, if we force it in, then obviously it's in there. Um, the additions are economically driven, not compliance driven. Uh, the EPU is not economic. We see much cheaper alternatives out in the industry today. Um, OPPD is in a good economic condition to meet the clean power plan with or without Fort Calhoun. Now, we did constrain energy sales, as Tim mentioned a little bit earlier, just to moderate that market variability, some of that you heard from Edward this morning in, in terms of uh, where we are through May. And then the stochastics. Um, did confirm lower cost and risk associated with the rebalanced portfolio. I put some definitions in here because we've had a lot of questions, both uh, internally and externally, about what, what's the difference between capacity and energy. So as we go forward in this conversation, we'll have a common understanding. So capacity is the amount of electricity that a power plant is capable of producing. So it's, it's, it's the power plant itself. The energy is the amount of electricity that are used by our customer owners at any one moment in time. So we have to meet their requirements. And then the system requirements is the highest amount of energy that is expected to be used by our customer owners at any one moment in time during a given year. And then we have to add in SPP mandated reserve margin, 13.6% today. We put this slide together to try to give a better understanding of, of what this rebalanced portfolio looked like. So we started with the baseline. This works. We started with the baseline. At the bottom of that, you see nuclear. It's the bottom block, 26%. Uh, if we take that block out, as we're, as we're proposing, everything slides down. Um, what you see at the bottom when you, when you slide that down is 2.5% of uh, our WAPA contract for hydro. Uh, you see our wind changes a bit. It goes up from 27% to 35%. Our coal goes up from 44 to 46 And our gas goes from 1 to 2%. Now, a couple of things here. These energy percentages are based on rebalancing the existing baseline portfolio. 
And that gas that you see up there, when we come over to the capacity, you see it went from 31 to 39 percent. That's really very, very economical for us to maintain because it has low cost, um, low fixed cost. And because of that, when it only runs 22 percent year to year, it's very economical for us to maintain. On the capacity side, the scrap works basically the same. You take the 16 percent of nuclear, you slide it out, the stack drops down. Um, I will go back and say 14% of our energy is not uh, needed, and so we're not replacing them. We're still long, as you can see, we're meeting our OPP system annual usage requirements. On the capacity side, again, pull out the 16% for per capita, slide everything down. We added in 5% of the capacity contracts that we need in order to maintain our capacity requirements with SPP. Uh, you can see our wind goes up by about 1%. Um, 33 percent of coal, 39 percent of gas, so again, we have more gas, set, gas assets to be utilized, but again, they only run on those hot summer peak days, one to two percent of the time. And we're still meeting our system requirements by moving from, from a baseline to a rebalance program. Our plans for capacity contract replacements. Um, Short term, we are proposing to run North Omaha 1 through 3 on natural gas for a longer period of time, and that's to get us through our summer peak loads. And then we're going to purchase low cost capacity from our SPP participants. About 90% of those, the contracts that are being proposed, come from natural gas units, and 10% come from coal facilities. Long term, we want to go back and run an integrated resource portfolio this fall. Uh, we'll go through a stakeholder process and we'll come up with a long-term alternative.